Hello and welcome to another episode of Blue Alpine TV. In today's episode, we'll talk about Zcash actually getting an ASIC miner from Bitmain. And we'll talk about Goldman Sachs opening up Bitcoin futures trading. So let's jump right into this uh, first news story. Um, crypto hardware giant Bitmain to release a first Zcash ASIC miner. So as you know, Zcash is a privacy focused cryptocurrency and they have actually proof of work algorithm. So um, it's kind of, uh, they have a specific one, it's called Equihash and um, Zcash is using normal proof of work mining. Now there is this story that the Bitmain, that Bitmain, the company that produces ASIC miners, has actually found out um, kind of a, a, a miner, an ASIC miner, capable of mining uh, Equihash secured networks. So Bitmain's Zcash ASIC miner, the Ant Miner Z9 Mini, has an advertised hash rate of 10k sol per second, and is scheduled to begin shipping in late. June. Now, obviously, this is kind of a problem for uh, proof uh, pro for uh, Zcash because the reason why they have used this Equihash um, algorithm is basically to kind of not allow ASIC producers to produce specific hardware for um, this type of cryptocurrency. So that kind of no centralization is happening when it comes to mining. Now with these kind of hardware devices, people are actually able to create kind of um, centralized uh, mining operations. So technically you could buy 10,000 of these and start mining those. And this is obviously not in the interest of the Zcash founders. Now it says here, uh, ASIC resistant mining algorithm has already begun because most people believe that Bitmain privately begins using its new ASICs months before it announces them to the general public. So there is this rumor going on that um, Bitmain, the company, is actually using those miners before, similar with Ethereum, similar with Monero, and similar with um, uh, this uh, Zcash miner, uh, that they are giving out to the public, but they have already been used to mine certain amount of cryptocurrencies. Now this could be in order to kind of do a quality control or to actually test the devices, but it is more likely that it's probably more profitable for them to keep it for them for now for a couple of months and then only release it because they can charge or make money double. So on the one side, they are actually mining the cryptocurrency and on the other side, they're selling the hardware. Now what is interesting here as well is that um, the uh, Zcash co-founder Zuko Wilcox has actually written a forum post and I will link this in the video description or in the podcast show notes um, saying that uh, ASIC resistance cannot be maintained forever. He has been educating himself on the current state of cryptocurrency mining. Um, he's saying Wilcox, who is also CEO of the privately operated Zcash company, that he had been struck at how essential GPU mining was for people in countries such as Venezuela, where ASIC miners, which need to be imported, would likely be stolen during shipment. Now, as you know, Zcash and especially Wilcox has been kind of trying to get uh, Zcash as a currency uh, established in Venezuela because Venezuelan people are actually struggling to get a proper currency running. Um, the uh, the Bolivar, their national currency is actually worth very little. Dollar is hard to come by and the Petro token is kind of an issue still. Nobody really knows what's going on there. So Zcash was kind of an interesting alternative for people actually trying to um, change or exchange money or actually buy goods in Venezuela. Uh, nonetheless, I think we will see more and more uh, ASIC miner stories like these. I'm not really sure whether, um, I mean, we can see it already with Monero, with Monero's price drop. Now, Monero is an interesting currency because technology wise, it's a very uh, privacy focused cryptocurrency, yet the price has gone down in the last couple of months and it hasn't properly rebounded in a way. Um, it could be on one side because there have been these different Monero forks and this uh, whole discussion around ASIC miners and that people just feel, look, 
ASIC miners should happen. It, it, it's, uh, it, it will increase the competitiveness of the miners, but there is always this risk of having a certain amount of centralization. So we will stay tuned about Bitmain's next steps and next focus, and, and also about the next steps from Zcash. Will they hard fork? Will they kind of fight against ASIC miners? Or will it just stay as is? Now, next up, we have this story from Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs plans to trade Bitcoin futures contracts. And this is huge news. Um, as you know, the C, um, the CBOE and CME, which are, I think, both Chicago based, have actually created these uh, Bitcoin futures. It's a specific market for institutional investors to actually trade Bitcoin futures. So you can kind of... Um, uh, uh, not gamble but a trade on bitcoin going up or down and you would only trade on the future and not the effective bitcoin now goldman sachs as you know is kind of uh, well the, the well most well known investment banking and financial services providers in the world and they have announced now to actually uh, trade bitcoin futures contracts and both goldman sachs jp morgan all these like uh, heavy wall street companies were always a bit hesitant in terms of uh, bitcoin uh, trading at all and um, what is interesting is that slowly but surely there are these hires happening like uh, one a key person from a from a um, bank is going to a crypto startup or a bank is actually hiring some crypto expert away or some digital asset expert away to actually build kind of this expertise in-house so this is quite interesting and um, it says here that it is important to note that bitcoin futures enable goldman to trade on underlying on the underlying bitcoin cryptocurrency without being directly exposed to it Goldman will not yet come directly into contact with Bitcoin blockchain. Justin Schmidt, Goldman's first digital asset trader, will handle the firm's Bitcoin trading efforts. As reported by New York Times, Schmidt is considering trading Bitcoin itself, provided Goldman can secure regulatory approval and mitigate the risks associated with holding cryptocurrency. Now, this is a really interesting part because obviously trading futures is one thing because you're only trading the futures and not the underlying asset, but trading the actual cryptocurrency, which could be in the interest of Goldman Sachs customers, um, it brings a certain regulatory aspect with it that they need to take care of, especially when you're kind of an established and big bank like this. Nonetheless, I think this is very, very good news. It just shows that institutional demand is here. The banks kind of want to offer certain products, whether it's it starts with futures or options, it doesn't really matter. Um, I think down the road, uh, we will see more banks actually adopting cryptocurrencies as assets, as um, assets they can kind of use directly. Um, one, one interesting like uh, ending here, what kind of information asymmetry does Goldman Sachs currently possess to confidently trade Bitcoin future contracts for their clients that other firms don't have? So it could be that Goldman Sachs is the only one, the leader in this space to actually be the first investment bank to actually offer uh, Bitcoin futures. But it could also be the case that Goldman Sachs um, kind of paves the way for all the others. And in a couple of months, we'll have all the major banks trading Bitcoin futures. Very possible. Um, so we will definitely stay uh, up to date with those news. As you know, institutional demand is important. Retail investors are also important, but we need kind of the support of the big banks in order to really get this crypto revolution going on. And with that, guys, we're already at the end of today's episode. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the podcast. I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye.